Hi and welcome to day 31 of Inktober Tangles Challenge 2022. I'm Anica, a certified Zen Tangle teacher from Croatia. And I am so happy to, you know, have spent another 31 days for the second time in a row with you, tangling every day, hopefully, you know, maybe some of you have tried Zen Tangle. Uh, by tangling along, maybe you were inspired to try a different approach to tangling or shading or highlighting, whatever it is. Thank you for being here with me. I will, there's plenty of space, only one tangle left. So I will do one of Zen Tangle's tangle, uh, Holibo, which we used before. I don't know if you remember, here it is our holibo or it was turned like this so I will just add a few more ribbons and I'm keeping this one a little bit bigger on purpose because I want to I want to use it as a ribbon where I will just write inktober 2022 another thing I want to do is draw one part of the ribbon so that it goes over my border and another part of the ribbon in a way that it goes under the border so here's another ribbon i think two will be just enough and then i will just extend this border like this so my ribbon is going on top of this one and then I will just extend it here so that it's hidden below the one on the right side and I will write inktober here so of course i could write inktober tangles 2022 but i will just you know i'm lazy <laughs> i'll just draw inktober but before doing it i will add these aura lines inside which you can do too or maybe skip and i will just draw this in my Oh, I can fit 20, 22. So the only thing that's missing is tangles, right? But that's fine. I will add some more lines just to make it a little bit, a little bit bigger. And then, of course, I can already start shading and highlighting this. But I think I might jump to the tangle number 31. It's Zen Tangles Pangea. Pangea is actually not a tangle. It's a reticulum. So it's, it's a space that you fill with tangle. And usually when we talk about reticula in Zen tangle, we talk about the grids. So square grids or triangular grids, then we fill with different fragments. And this one is a very loose shape, kind of roundish, but you will see now, it's like, almost like a potato. <laughs> or even potatoes have um, more regular shapes than Pangea. So you can see how I will just now draw several of them. It's like drawing a puzzle. So you are filling the spaces that you have and just starting by drawing an aura line 
and now here on top I think I will just stop here maybe I will add some shapes that come out of the shape my potato <laughs> Pangea <laughs> mm. I'm thinking about whether I would like to add one here or maybe this would be just enough and later I can decide whether I will place some other tangles in the leftover space. I'm not sure which ones, but it's not something that I need to decide right now. Before I forget, the last thing that we should do is sign. And I will add my chop here. So it's not the last step or, you know, it's normally step number seven in Zentangle, but I want to do it now so that I can place it here in the bottom right corner before I forget about it and place something else here. Um, I'm doing some roundings here in these corners. One of my favorite Zentangle enhancers that I use when I draw and i think that in these bottom parts i will just add lines because the spaces are quite big so i don't want to ink them in maybe it will be too much black ink if i add ink and you know norm normally i'm much better when i need to add these parallel lines to the right from left to right so you might consider that when you tangle if you are right-handed perhaps it's also easier for you to add to start from the left side and then add them towards the right part as I approach my chop I think I will just need to leave some space for it but let's see when I get there what happens maybe I'll surprise myself but no you know it's the same black pen so it doesn't really make sense to go over it because uh, my chop will just be unrecognizable if I do it so I will just do these lines like flick flick them and also from the bottom very very small And my chop is still visible. And then these Pangea uh, fragments need to be filled with some... Um, uh, these Pangea fragments need to be filled, so I will use fragments to fill them. And I think in this top part I will use some mukas that will just grow out of these shapes and if you want to start doing it with me feel free to do it with me if you maybe want to first look at Zentangle's video it's one of their project packs maybe you want to just take a look at their way to add it before you jump into you know drawing it with me so feel free to just pause and maybe re revisit or visit Zentangle's video or just draw with me. I will start with one of these top shapes. I will start with doing this kind of a C, C thing, C shape towards the middle. Maybe it's not the middle, maybe a little bit above the middle part. And then I will just start adding a few mukha shapes. So you can see my first mukha growing from this C shape. And then another one. And another one. My favorite tangle has to be mukha. It's my go-to shape. Oops, that one went too far. Well, Sometimes mukas do what they want to do and not what I want them to do. They are naughty creatures. Now I will just 
finish this shape I will extend these kind of lines here and I'll do the same with the next one so starting with one that extends and then adding others it's like a mocha bouquet that grows in different directions and here I don't have too much space but still I'll find a way to fit a few more maybe just one more before I call it done it's not a whole shape just a part of it if you don't like mukha I think that you have just not worked <laughs> enough to get to know it because you know once you become friendly with the shape I don't think that you can not love it that you can not love it hmm. Did I say this correct so you you have to love it once you are familiar with it once you explore the shape and how it can develop it can be a wonderful filler that can fit in any space and it can be a beautiful central shape like focal tangle it can be anything you want it to be it's so versatile it's so elegant it's so playful you know mukha is just a beauty of a tangle if you ask me so i just hope that you will also all love or learn to love it and now that i'm done with my mukas i think i will just start drawing these lines and i'll start first with just dividing my space into shapes or with very loose you know i'm not trying too hard i'm not overthinking just kind of doing this thing with my pen where I'm reaching from my mucha stems and from this C shape to all sides and then I will just do some weighted lines so adding some more drama to some of them near the edges without touching this part that's right next to the C shape or to mucha stems and that's why they're what the reason why I do it like that is of course because there's so much more space along the edges of the Pangea than there is here right next to the C shape and Muka stems. So just add some more substance on this outer part where there's enough space to do that and you can see how without even shading and highlighting it already looks so 3d i will do the same on the other one so i'm starting from this upper part and i think i can do this waiting I'm trying not to not to overthink and I remember when the tangles was just released I was kind of I don't know I didn't I didn't feel like I could I could draw it I was kind of scared of it and I think I was just overthinking how do I position the lines what do I do but the fact is that if you just let these lines grow radially and spread from this C shape 
towards the edges and add this these you know bold parts along the edges you will be fine and it will look beautiful so now I find it easy You can always do some, you know, fine tuning after you are done. Okay, I have these two wonderful Muka bouquets here. And I have three additional Pangeas on the bottom. And I'm thinking about maybe Zeus doing some other kind of filling. I'm not sure. I need to think about it. 